Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel that is Achieve IAS. So friends, as you know that on our channel we are targeting the exam of civil services and for that purpose we have multiple series for you people so that you can prepare well. So in this series we also have our friends uh, daily current affairs series in which what we do we daily discuss 10 MCQs based upon the current affairs of the day. So today is 26 August so let's see what is there on table for you people in MCQs. First question is consider the following statements related to partial credit guarantee scheme. First the scheme would enable public sector banks to purchase pooled assets of financially sound private banks amounting to rupees 1 lakh crore. Second the scheme will solve the NPA problem of private sector so which of the above statement is correct let me tell you friends that both of these statements are incorrect uh, it is basically partial credit guarantee scheme is basically a scheme in which public sector banks can purchase the pooled assets of uh, NBFCs that is non banking financial companies amounting to rupees 1 lakh crore so uh, scheme uh, will solve the liquidity problem of uh, uh, these NBFCs which are facing due to IL, IL and FS crisis. So solution is D because neither 1 and 2 is correct. So uh, in pursuance of the, the, the announcement that was made in 2019-20 budget. So this scheme will uh, become uh, has become operative from 10th August uh, 2019. So this will enable the NBFC uh, the NBFCs to sell their uh, assets worth uh, like roads uh, to, to the uh, needy public sector banks which will buy them and this will ensure that the NBFCs have the money in hand so that they can continue their lending to the sectors like MSMEs and retail and housing so that the economy remains functioning. So basically uh, to, uh, the purpose is to buy 1 lakh crore worth assets. So this is objective is to uh, to avoid the, uh, uh, the that asset and liability mismatch that has crept in the NBFCs. So this will ensure that NBFCs have the money and they have they they don't have to resort to distrust sale of their assets for meeting their commitments because obviously uh, when uh, when they have uh, they, they must NBFCs must have cash because uh, uh, they they must lend uh, th those uh, uh, entities that demand loan from them. Uh, it is not must but they must have at least uh, also the enough cash so that they can pay their liabilities so liabilities if there is liquidity crunch they cannot pay their liabilities for that purpose they may resort to distress sale of their assets to prevent this key uh, to the to prevent this the scheme has been introduced so it is one time partial credit guarantee offered by government of India so it will not be always there it will remain operative until six months uh, or, or uh, uh, until the amount of one lakh crore has been uh, uh, kind of uh, by, by uh, these uh, public sector banks whichever is earlier. So next uh, question is consider the following statements related to NAFET. Uh, first it is regulatory body for the cooperative societies in India. Second it gives credit granted to cooperative societies for the capital investment in the marketing of the products. Which of the above statements is correct? Let me tell you friends that both of these statements are incorrect because this National Agricultural uh, uh, Cooperative Marketing Federation of India is basically uh, a multi-state a multi society, cooperative society uh, that was set up uh, in 1958 and it is registered under Multi-State Cooperative Societies Act. So it was set up basically to promote cooperative marketing of agricultural produce to b benefit the farmers. So, so small farmers uh, in India they are uh, they are quite uh, uh, their number is quite large but they are very small so they do not uh, properly uh, kind of uh, uh, they they don't have the facility to properly market their products to enable to uh, to market their products this uh, national cooperative Agri uh, national agriculture cooperative marketing development federation of india was set, uh, marketing federation of india was set up and uh, it is do remember that it is a multi state cooperative society so as is clear from national so it was obviously be it will be a multi state cooperative society to promote cooperative marketing of agriculture produced to benefit the farmers so it is basically composed of agricultural farmers for the main purpose uh, for, uh, uh, and uh, and their they have the final authority to say in the form of members of general body in the working of faith so objective is to organize promote develop marketing processing storage of uh, agricultural horticulture for us produce distribution of agriculture machinery implements and other inputs undertake interstate import and export trade extra so let's move to the next question next is consider the following statements related to fortification in India first it is mandatory to fortify all the food products sold in India second the food fortification will help sold will help to solve the malnutrition problem at affordable prices 
so which of the above statement is correct only second statement is correct that is answer is b first first is not correct it is not mandatory so solution is b so food safety fortification in india basically uh, it is governed by the uh, the food safety and standards authority of india regulation 2016 which uh, which passed the red, uh, regulation uh, in order to set the standards for food fortification and to encourage the production manufacturing uh, distribution sale and consumption of fortified foods so uh, uh, by this you can uh, you can then uh, clearly judge that in fact uh, government of india promotes food fortification because it has uh, uh, the authority which has the regulation in place and in it says that promotion must be done uh, of and consumption of fortified foods must be promoted so regulations also provide for specific role that uh, this authority will be playing in the promotion of uh, for food fortification and to f make food uh, fortification mandatory so if if uh, if the for example if the state statement uh, in question uh, uh, if you come across the statement that government of india promotes food fortification yes it promotes so that's uh, uh, this sets the premise for national summit on fortification of food so benefits are uh, multifarious so they reduce the malnutrition and they they consumed on if consumed on a regular and frequent uh, uh, basis uh, uh, they maintain body uh, they will maintain body stores of nutrients more efficiently and more effective than will uh, intermittent su uh, supplements so uh, basically uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, issues nowadays that are going on for due to monoculture people are not uh, eating food that is uh, diverse so uh, that uh, that uh, balanced diet is not there so for that purpose uh, uh, supplements have to be taken but the uh, food fortification will ensure that these uh, intermittent supplements are not uh, taken and nutrient uh, store of body is maintained more efficiently and effectively so they help in lowering the risk of multitude deficiencies that can result from seasonal deficit uh, deficit in the food supply or poor quality diet so it can be an excellent way of increasing the content of vitamins in breast milk and thus reducing the need for supplementation in postpartum women and in fact uh, infants and uh, if uh, widely distributed and widely consumed uh, it has the potential to uh, reduce malnutrition problem so uh, fortification is often more cost effective so it is not just uh, for poor it is for wealthy as well because wealthy people uh, today lot of uh, consume lot of carbohydrates but they may lack that diversity in their diet so that will be ensured by the food fortification so it is cost effective than other strategies and in fact it is more valuable in the context of climate change when the climate change uh, heat uh, 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 temperature is increasing and it is found that and due to increase in temperature different crops uh, they they are lacking in different nutrients that they they had prior uh, they, they, uh, to, they, uh, that that they were having uh, in them prior to prior to this uh, excessive heat now let's move on to the next question fourth is composite water management index is released by a ministry of jal shakti b niti aayog c india water portal d none of the above so answer is b that is niti aayog so it has released this composite water management index to pr uh, promote the awareness among people and governments about the realities of water crisis in the country so it the, it it is basically the basic purpose is to create awareness among the people as well as government so it basically it in a, aims to enable effective water management by making uh, indian states aware that uh, that the growing crisis they are facing so it will provide useful information for the states and concerned central ministries and departments enabling them to formulate and implement suitable strategies for better management of water resources so basic purpose is to uh, uh, to uh, to focus upon uh, data governed or evidence based policy making so it has ranked all states in the index on uh, on the composite water management comprising nine broad sectors and 28 different indicators covering various aspects so key performers gujarat has topped uh, uh, in 2017 18 it is followed by andhra pradesh madhya pradesh goa karnataka and tamil nadu and in fact these states are those states which have faced uh, water crisis uh, 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 the which are drought prone states so northeastern states and himalayan states has be, have been adjusted uh, uh, northeastern and himalayan states himachal pradesh has been adjusted uh, number 1 in 2017 18 followed by uttarakhand tripura and assam and union territories have first time submitted their data and puducherry has de has been declared as the top ranker so in terms of incremental change in index haryana holds number 1 position so you might be aware of the green revolution and then the consequent consequent introduction of water intensive crops in haryana so which has led to depletion of ground water resources in haryana as well as in punjab as well so uh, this uh, this has shown that haryana is uh, in uh, number 1 in terms of 
incremental change. On an average, 80 percent of the states assessed on the index over the last three years have improved their water management scores. So this is a, a significant uh, uh, thing which you can uh, uh, focus upon in your uh, mains answer writing as well because this helps you. So average 80 uh, percent states have assessed on the index, uh, and uh, they, they they sorry assessed on the index they have improved their water management scores with an average improvement of plus 5.2 points. So this is a positive thing. So key finding is uh, you can read about it in explanation. Let's move to the next question. Consider the following statements related to corporate social responsibility. First, it is legally mandated under Article 135 of the Companies Act 2013. Second, all the companies should spend part of their profit every year for the social project. So, which of the above statements is correct? Only one is correct, that is uh, uh, A. So, the answer would be one only correct. So, the CSR is basically the social responsibility that the corporate sector has um, uh, the, that it must take for the com uh, so that. Uh, it can uh, compensate for the uh, things that uh, they are uh, for the for the things that they of which they are making profit, so that the society as a whole can get benefit of it. So it can take up uh, uh, efforts on environment and then social welfare and promote. Uh, uh, can it can be on positive social and environmental change. So it uh, it, it uh, it's effort that go beyond but, uh, but may be required by regulators. So income is earned only from the society and therefore therefore it should be given back. So this is the basic principle because all of the things that the uh, corporate sector is doing is based upon the inputs of the society. So it has a responsibility in this regard and then uh, that this responsibility is termed as corporate social responsibility. So legal mandate is under article uh, com under companies act 2013 any company with a net worth of uh, uh, to be rupees 500 crore or more or turnover of the uh, company to be 1000 crore or more or net profit of the company to be 5 crore or more. So so it has to spend at least 2% of last 3 years average net pro profits on CSR activities as specified in the schedule 7 as amended from the time to time. The rules came into effect from 1st April 2014. So please do remember it. It is very important. It is, le it is legally mandated. It is there in Companies Act 2013. So uh, there is a, also a, a net worth of 500 crore then 1000 crore is turnover or 5 crore is uh, this net profit. So the 2% must be spent of the previous three years av average net profits. So these rules are not only applicable to Indian companies but as well as uh, the companies who have branches in India uh, 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 and uh, who have a physical presence in India. So qualifying company will be required to constitute a CSR committee consisting of three or more directors. So there will be a, a committee, a proper committee that will focus on focus upon CSR activities. So it, so it shall formulate and recommend to the board a policy which indicates the activities to be undertaken, allocate resources and monitor the CSR policy of the company. So proper uh, institutional mechanism has been sought to be established in these companies so that there is a proper cell that is that focuses upon the CSR and advises uh, advises upon CSR so that uh, uh, the measures that are taken they are effective. So if the company do, uh, did not spend CSR it has to disclose the reason for not spending and non-disclosure or absence of the details will be penalized from rupees 50,000 to rupees 25 lakh or imprisonment of up to two three uh, up to three years. India is the first country in the world to enshrine corporate giving into law. So what activities can be carried on? Various activities are there. So how is it is beneficial? They are uh, consumers are socially conscious. Many consumers seek uh, out companies that ch uh, support ch charitable causes. So uh, say for example, uh, if uh, you are a person that sees that which whether this com uh, the the product of the company or the service of the company uh, the which uh, which I'm going to buy, buy that whether this company spends on CSR then it is act and it is an active uh, uh, kind of. Uh, con uh, conscious in the minds of those who, who prefer uh, who, who buy uh, the, who they are of certain type of customers and then competitive advantage is their businesses that show how they are more socially responsible than their competitors tend to stand out and it it also boosts employee morale morale because they have a significant impact and it reinforces his confidence on company's empathy and then is Bavar 373 uh, rec uh, recently seen in reviews related to a space satellite new planet in the space see Iran's air defense system none of the above so friends the answer is uh, Iran's air defense system 
So in Iran's new homegrown air defense system is Bava 373. It is being touted as Islamic Republic's first domestically produced long-range missile defense system. So it it basically guards uh, 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 the uh, this. Uh, uh, air air uh, air system of the country uh, uh, airspace of the country it is a long range mobile surface to air missile system so please note it it is important uh, you may not just be asked that which country of uh, of which country is this bavar uh, 373 but you may also be told that it, it is low, whether long range or short range so it is long range mobile surface to air missile so next is uh, consider the following statements related to genetically modified organisms first it uses the principles of biotechnology to design uh, uh, to design products to suit the environmental conditions. Second, recently Nigeria has approved the open cultivation of ge genetically modified Bt cowpea. So, which of the above statements is correct, friend? All of these statements, uh, both uh, the, the, both of these statements are correct. So, yes, uh, genetically modified uh, organism is basically that uh, which, which uses the principle of biotechnology to design the final product so that to suit different conditions that may be environmental or other. So, recently Nigeria has approved the open cultivation of genetically modified Bt cowpea. So Bt cowpea has become the first country to approve open cultivation of uh, GM Bt cowpea. Please note it, it is basically pest resistant and can help co uh, co uh, combat malnutrition especially in children. So it contains uh, transgene cry, cry 1AB which can be toxic for human liver cells and also alter human immune system of lab animals. Anti-GM groups claim. So it is not uh, that uh, uh, it is the it is free from its faults. Next, let's next question is consider the following statements related to Muslim Women Protection of Rights on Marriage Act 2019. First, it criminalizes all forms of divorce uh, followed by Muslim community. Second, the act provides for imprisonment up to seven years. Third, the act does not have any provision related to custody of the minor children. So, which of the above statement is correct? First, is clearly incorrect because it doesn't criminalize all form of divorces but uh, only the triple tarak and uh, third is also incorrect because there is a provision for the custody of children regarding second uh, provision i have a doubt uh, so uh, it may be correct or it may not be uh, i think it is it is not the act provides for imprisonment up to uh, minimum imprisonment is i think uh, i didn't remember but this none of the above let's see what it says uh, so it was basically it uh, it, uh, decriminal, uh, it criminalizes the lake with this. So uh, penalty is basically uh, up to three years. Yeah, up to three years of imprisonment is there. Sorry for the uh, this thing. Uh, sometimes the facts skip from the mind. So it is cognizable. That is no uh, warrant will be required uh, when when uh, when arresting the person. So there is detail you can read about the detail next question is consider the following statements related to world youth conferences on kindness first it is organized for the first time by the ministry of culture second the theme for the conference was vasudeva kutumbakam gandhi for the contemporary world celebrating the 150th birth anniversary of mahatma gandhi so which of the above statement is correct friends only second statement is correct so the answer would be b so its theme was basically Vasudeva Kutambakam, Gandhi for the contemporary world. So it basically the purpose of the theme was to, to uh, focus upon uh, the kindness that there must be in today's youth. Uh, the, the principle obviously of, uh, of uh, a kind of uh, promoting Gandhian values in today's youth. So world's first youth conference on kind, uh, world for, uh, first world youth conference on kindness is being organized in New Delhi. Uh, so it is organized by UNESCO, Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Education for peace and sustainable development ministry of hrd so please note it it is important it is not organized by ministry of culture it is organized by ministry of hrd so uh, the first statement is wrong and uh, then uh, objective is to basically uh, intensive youth led capacity building workshops to enhance the capacities of youth on social and emotional learning skills and competencies such as empathy mindfulness compassion kindness and critical inquiry through the prism of identity and global issues a generative space consisting of experts panels and ta uh, tag e plenary for youth and experts to share and critically engage with the concept of peace through kindness and non-violence a platform to celebrate 
created inspiring acts of kindness that are affecting change in the world and action programming for youth and uh, youth urgency so obviously it is focusing on youth uh, so you can uh, th there must also be the statement that it is organized by ministry of youth affairs but uh, do remember it is focused upon kind of a development uh, of uh, human resources so it is uh, organized by hrd then uk sinha committee recently seen new news is related to a msme sector reform bnpa problem c monetary policy transformation uh, sorry transformation d is none of the above so the answer is friends uh, a msme sector reform so basically rbi wanted uk sinha led committee set up to study the problems of faced by msme submitted its recommendations uh, recently so how significant it, this sector is it contributes to 45% of the manufacturing output 40% of the exports and 28% of the gdp so more importantly msme sectors employs about one uh, uh, about, about you can say this is this figure is close to 11.1 crore so worldwide small businesses account for more than 50% of the employment so the, it is a uh, employment rich sector so okay they are the key engines of job creation and economic growth in the developing countries besides these msme is also true reflection of the economics where people really matter so committee was formed in small uh, basically in india for small businesses have been facing a range of disruptions since monetization uh, demonetization decision so you have to focus upon their uh, key its key recommendations please take uh, the note of its key recommendations because already the video has uh, passed the uh, kind of uh, maximum limit of 20 minutes so i have to uh, stop discussing so this is all about friends today's video if you like the questions if you like the video then do ensure that you like it share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel and if in case you want to subscribe to the pdfs of these mcqs then you can contact us uh, on our mail id that is gys21 at the rate gmail.com or you can also contact us at our number that is 8968920720 so there is also a subscription link that is given in the description box so you can use that link to join our uh, series uh, daily mcq series so this is all about front today's uh, video thank you have a very nice day ahead